All right, guys, Darren from Honest Money. And if you're looking to save money on your car insurance this year, hopefully you have come to the right video. What I wanna do in this video is share with you 10 tips plus a bonus tip that I use to save money on car insurance. Now, I've been driving for the best part of 20 years, so I've been through the car insurance process quite a few times, and I also run a website all about car insurance as well. So hopefully the information I give you in this video, you'll find super useful and it will help you save money on your car insurance. So straight into the tips, and tip number one, and that is that I want you to get a quote from the comparison websites. Now, I know that doesn't really sound like a tip, but bear with me while I explain why it's important. Now, when you get a quote from the comparison website, what it's really useful for doing is getting a list of kind of three to five companies that like your individual profile. Now, all the different insurance companies, they target different groups based on their internal policies and the risk factors that they are happy with. So just because one insurance company is cheap for one person doesn't mean they'll be cheap for someone else. So by doing this comparison quote to start with, you get a good idea of the companies that may actually be cheaper for you, especially if you go with them directly and implement some of the tips I'm gonna give you. Also, when I'm doing these comparison quotes, I like to use non-personalized details. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, the first thing I do is set up a dummy email address. So I go to somewhere like Gmail and I sign up for a free email address. And then when I complete the quote form itself, I use as many non-personalized details as possible. So for example, my date of birth, I might tweak by a couple of days. Um, and when I'm entering the car, rather than entering my reg plate, I might manually select it. Or if I can't find the car in the drop-down list, I might go on to AutoTrader to find an identical car with a reg plate that I can use. Um, and then when I'm entering my home address, I always enter my my own postcode and then randomly choose someone else's number in the street. Now I know that seems a little bit cheeky and things are generally better now that GDPR has been introduced. However, I'd still strongly recommend using as many non-personalized details as you can when you're doing these comparison quotes. Now once you have some baseline quotes to start with, I then want you to go to some of the providers that aren't available on the comparison website. So for example, in the UK, two of the big boys that aren't on the comparison websites are Direct Line and Aviva. And I've been with both of those companies at some point throughout the many years that I've had car insurance I think I was even with Aviva when they were called Norwich Union so make sure you go direct as well as going through the comparison websites because not all car insurance providers are available on the comparison websites now moving into what you might class as the real car insurance tips and this is I want you to consider adding an additional named driver to your policy now this isn't front end I'm going to come back to that in a moment what I mean with this is you have the policy in your name and you are the main driver but what you can also do is consider adding additional drivers that are experienced and also have clean licenses for example when when I lived at home, I used to add my dad onto my policy. So by adding him as a named driver to my policy, with some insurance companies, the overall quote would come down. And this is very dependent on the insurance company themselves because not all insurance companies will bring the price down by adding an experienced driver, but some do. But it's definitely worth playing about with. Some years I had my dad on the policy, some years I had my dad and my girlfriend on the policy, and at the moment I just have my wife on the policy. So always play about with who is the cheapest person to have on your policy to see if it brings it down. Sometimes it works out really well with the right insurance companies, other times it's not worth and it's best just to have yourself on the policy. Now going back to fronting, which is illegal, and that is when you say that someone else is the main driver of the car when they're not. So many, many years ago, it was very, very popular for people to put the car in their parents' name and say that their mum or dad was the main driver and then they were just added as an additional driver. Now that is completely legal and I would not recommend using that method. However, I do recommend experimenting with adding additional drivers to your policy when you are the main driver. The next thing that I want you to do is experiment with the voluntary excess. Also, keep an eye on your compulsory excess so there's no surprises there. Now, what I always do, I like to experiment with different figures to see what the saving actually is. So, for example, if I increase my excess by £250 and it saves me a fiver, then I probably won't do it. But if I increase my voluntary excess, so by 500 pound, and that might save me 100 pound, then it's something I would consider. So it's all about balance, it's all about that additional risk. How much are you willing to risk versus how much you could potentially save? So always experiment with your voluntary excess. Also, and this is something that not many people know about, is that if you have a claim and you don't claim on your own vehicle, you don't actually have to pay that excess. So I had an accident many, many years ago and the other party did claim, um, but I didn't. I got my car repaired by a local garage, which cost me about 150 pound. Uh, and the other person somehow managed to claim about 7,000 pound worth of damage through the insurance company. Um, but I never had to pay the excess, which was a huge surprise to me at the time. And even if you go to the Admiral website, which I'll show you now, they have text which confirms that this wasn't a fluke just for me. It says here, if you don't make a claim, but a third party does and we pay out, you don't have to pay your excess. So if you have a low value car and you never intend to make a claim even if you're in an accident then it might be worth pumping that excess right up because you're never going to claim on your own vehicle so it's definitely something that's worth considering experiment with that excess and keep in mind that you won't have to pay the excess if you don't claim on your own vehicle 
The next thing that I want you to do is to get creative with your job description. Now, I don't want you to lie, but sometimes it is possible to categorize yourself slightly differently to how you may have done originally. And if you get this right, sometimes it is possible to save good money. So I'm gonna take you to another website here to give you some examples. And as you can see here, depending on how you categorize yourself, you know, depending on what job title you give yourself, it is sometimes possible to save money. So for example, a bricklayer may be cheaper than classing yourself as a construction worker. Or for example, an editor is more expensive than classing yourself as a journalist. So have a think about your job and how you could potentially categorize yourself slightly differently. I and mean, a good way to experiment with it is with this website. And I'll pop a link to this in the description. What it allows you to do is enter your job title and enter lots of variations of job title. And it should marry up with what you see on the car insurance website. So without me even entering a job title at the top, you can see here a great example of the different ways you could categorize yourself if you're an administrator. And this applies throughout lots of different industries. So have a think about your job. How could you potentially rename your job to something that may save you money on car insurance? Now the next point is quite a simple one is that I want you to go with a fully comprehensive policy. Now 10, 15 years ago, third party and first party fire and theft policies were all the rage and they were great for new drivers, especially as they did help to keep policy costs down. However, due to lots of new drivers using them, it's quite often now much cheaper to get a fully comprehensive policy and some insurance companies don't even offer them. So when you're getting your quotes, if you're getting third party quotes at the moment, get a fully comprehensive quote as well and see how things stack up. Now with many of the quotes you'll get, especially the ones where you go direct through the website, so they will try and bolt on lots of optional extras at the end of the quote process. So some of these things might be, for example, key cover, um, misfueling cover, legal cover, personal belongings cover, and stuff like that. So remove all of the ones that you don't really want. You know, the only one that I generally keep on is legal cover, just in case I'm ever in an accident and I want a bit of additional legal support, but I usually remove all of the other covers. So always check that there aren't optional extras added onto the policy that you don't actually want. However, having said that, I have I've seen it before where sometimes a particular insurance company will be wanting to promote a particular service and by adding that optional extra to the policy it added a discount so always check it always experiment and that applies with everything for insurance companies whatever you try try it with all different insurance companies because everyone will react slightly differently now once you've narrowed it down to a couple of providers what i want you to do is to go on to some of the cashback websites such as quidco and top cashback to see if there's any cashbacks available for those policies I also want you to go to some of the enthusiast forums. So there's lots of forums with lots of different types of cars. And quite often some of these forums have discount codes exclusively available through that forum for that type of car. So always check out the cashback websites and check out enthusiast forums and also some of the enthusiast Facebook groups because sometimes there are exclusive discounts available. Now with these discounts and with the cashback, always check that they don't knock each other out because sometimes a discount isn't available if you use the cashback website. And sometimes I've even seen it that when you click through the cashback website, the actual quote price on the website itself will go back up. So keep that in mind, always make notes of your quotes so you can compare directly when you add on these additional discounts. The next thing that I want you to experiment with is with the annual mileage. Now it makes sense, the less mileage you do, the cheaper that your policy should be. However, that isn't always the case and that's why it's important to experiment with all different mileage. So try 8,000, try 10,000, try 12,000 and see how it comes back. Now you would expect it to be cheaper the less miles you do, but it's not always the case. And I'm gonna show you an example um, on the which website. And what they have here is data from around 2.5 million car insurance quotes and it gives you an average of the cheapest quote for these mileage ranges. And quite surprisingly, the ones doing the fewest mileage are actually more expensive than the ones doing the slightly higher mileage. So depending on the insurance company, that may not always be the case, but it's definitely something that's worth toying around with when you're going through that car insurance quote process. And my final tip before I get to my bonus tip is that I never want you to automatically accept any car insurance renewal quote. Now every car insurance company will increase their cost every single year if you let them. Now what happens to me every year is that quote comes through and they say to me, oh, it's gone up about 100 to 150 pounds because all insurance companies now have to include the previous year's quote in that renewal price so you can see exactly how much your car insurance has gone up. So never ever accept your car insurance quote without contacting the company first to haggle over the price. Now onto the bonus tip and this is my favorite tip because it's the one thing that's probably saved me the most money throughout my car insurance history and that is to pick up the telephone, especially if it's a renewal quote. Every year when my renewal quote comes through, I call my insurance company and I say to them, look, I've got the renewal quote, it is higher than last year, 
before I go contacting other insurance companies, what can you do? And usually that one phone call, which will take 15 to 20 minutes, will probably save me a hundred pound, if not more, depending on how high that quote was. So always pick up the phone and contact your existing insurer to discuss your renewal. And if it's a new policy, once you've done that quote via the website, it's always worth calling them directly and saying to them, look, I've got a quote on the website, it's good, but can you do it any cheaper? Now, some companies will turn around and say to you, no, the website is the best price because we offer a new customer discount on the website. But there are many companies that will engage you with you and will give you a cheaper quote to secure your business. So hopefully you guys found this video useful and you can use some of those tips to save money on car insurance this year. If you do, I'd really appreciate if you could take a moment to scroll down and just hit that like button. It makes a big, big difference to these videos. Also, if you're not subscribed, make sure you subscribe to the channel and let me know how much you're paying for your car insurance this year in the comments. I'd love to hear from you and I'll see you guys in the next video.